Bitcoin ETFs are finally here. Should you be using them? Welcome back to the Bitcoin layer. I'm Nick Batia. Happy New Year and happy 15th birthday to Bitcoin. On January 3rd, 2009, we got the first version of the Bitcoin software, and 15 years later, Bitcoin is a monetary network worth about $900 billion. So, on January 3rd, people have been known to celebrate something called proof of keys. We're going to explain what that means, especially in the context of Bitcoin ETFs about to be approved any day. I want this video to be something that breaks down the basics of a Bitcoin ETF and compares it to Bitcoin for people that might not have ever participated in this market before. They might be wondering, is now the time to invest in Bitcoin and should I be doing so via a Bitcoin ETF? And if not an ETF, what to use and how to invest in Bitcoin? So. Let's break down the difference between ETFs and purchasing Bitcoin via our sponsor, River. River is a Bitcoin-only exchange. They offer a product that lets you purchase Bitcoin, but it is different than how it would work with an ETF. We're going to explain the difference between these two options using the word delivery, okay? So on one side, a Bitcoin ETF we have no delivery. And with River purchasing Bitcoin, you can and you have the option to take delivery. So what does this word delivery mean in the context of Bitcoin? And this is really where we have to start with the question, should you be buying an ETF? Remember that at the Bitcoin layer, we don't offer financial advice. We're not advising you to buy Bitcoin via River. We're not advising you to buy Bitcoin via the ETF. We're simply explaining the difference between your options if and when you decide to purchase Bitcoin, okay? So delivery, what does that mean? Now, if you've never participated in the Bitcoin market before, you might not be aware of the difference in how we can store Bitcoin. So in a Bitcoin ETF, what you are doing is you are not purchasing Bitcoin. You are purchasing shares in a Bitcoin fund. And the reason that Bitcoin ETFs, specifically these spot ETFs, are gaining so much notoriety even days before they are officially announced and approved, the reason is that the legal requirement is that once you purchase the shares of the fund, that fund must take the dollars and purchase real Bitcoin out in the open market and custody those Bitcoin and take delivery of those Bitcoin. And so when you are purchasing a Bitcoin ETF, what you are doing is you are facilitating a third party to take delivery of Bitcoin. So it does remove Bitcoin from the available supply and it should, at the margin, drive price up when the demand is unlocked there. But what you are not doing when you purchase a Bitcoin ETF is you are not giving yourself any capability whatsoever to take delivery of Bitcoin. So what is Bitcoin then if you can't take delivery of it in the ETF? See, you have to understand that the ETF themselves are going to be taking delivery of Bitcoin. Now, remember, Bitcoin is a decentralized currency. It uses an architecture called a blockchain, which is basically the Bitcoin blockchain is an updated ledger that anybody with a Bitcoin node can access and download at any time. And that ledger updates every 10 minutes. We get new Bitcoin blocks, which are essentially a bulk of transactions that only happen periodically. 
the reason that these blocks are introduced periodically and not constantly is so that everybody that has a node can agree within seconds what the state of the ledger is, what the state of all balances are. And in that way, we have a decentralized currency. If the currency wanted to move much faster, it would need much fewer nodes and therefore reach centralization. And that's what you see with most other cryptocurrencies. And it's also how the traditional financial system works. When the wire system settles, what's happening is that banks are coordinating with them with each other and with the Federal Reserve, which is the central clearing system of the United States banks. And in that way, the centralized Federal Reserve is able to ensure other banks what their balances are, and those banks are able to ensure their customers what bank balances are. So centralized currency is a different architecture than Bitcoin. That is why Bitcoin moves somewhat slower than some people might expect. They might expect that because it's an internet-based currency, it might be instant. Bitcoin is not instant because it needs time for everybody in the network to get on the same page. That is the only way to achieve a decentralized currency. So back to the word delivery. If you purchase Bitcoin via an ETF, when you purchase shares, those shares do not give you any legal right to take delivery of the Bitcoin from the fund itself. You are assigning custody to that fund and that fund, right? ETF stands for exchange traded fund. That fund keeps the Bitcoin. However they choose to keep it or whatever third party they choose to keep it will also be in the documents and they will be legally required to do so. So again, you are contributing to the removal of Bitcoin from available supply. So in theory, you are contributing directly to the marginal demand increase for Bitcoin. But what you are not doing is giving yourself the ability to take delivery of Bitcoin. Now, let's compare that to River. River is a Bitcoin-only exchange. You can deposit your dollars, your US dollars, deposit them with River, use those dollars to purchase Bitcoin, and then use your own custody choice, whether it's your own wallet that you have a device for, you have a software wallet that's your on your own device and that you have the keys to, or any other solution. Maybe you've ch chosen your own custodian that's a third-party custodian that gives you auditability. You have the ability to withdraw your Bitcoin from River, giving yourself delivery. Right now, you are the one that is the custodian. If you have chosen self-custody, you can do that with River. You cannot do that with an ETF. Now, on January 3rd, there is a tradition called proof of keys. This basically means that if you have a balance of Bitcoin on a third-party exchange or platform, it is the tradition to withdraw that Bitcoin to your own custody to ensure that the whole system is working properly and that your third-party custodians or service providers actually have the Bitcoin that it says it does on the screen. Now, in this tradition, over the last couple days, I myself have been taking custody of sats here and there from different third-party custodians, including River. And so yesterday, I withdrew Bitcoin. I used the Bitcoin blockchain. I didn't use Lightning Network. I have before with River. River allows you to use Lightning Network. In this particular instance, I used an on-chain transaction and I withdrew my Bitcoin from the River platform to my own wallet. Now, let me just tell you one side note about River. I was using the blockchain at the I was using the Bitcoin blockchain yesterday and I saw that fees were very, very high on the Bitcoin network, atypically high. 
I assume that there were a lot of transactions going on to and from exchanges, as well as perhaps the beginning of the year, the first business day of the year, just normal business type of transactions. Now, so comparing ETFs again to River, they are both third-party platforms, mind you. River is a company just like BlackRock is a company. River offers you the ability to purchase Bitcoin with US dollars. BlackRock, when they have their ETF, will not be offering you the ability to purchase Bitcoin with your US dollars. They will be offering you the ability to purchase shares in a fund, and those shares are not convertible to Bitcoin, meaning you cannot take delivery with an ETF, okay? That is the first major difference, delivery uh, versus not being able to take delivery. Now, the second difference, and it's related to the first about delivery, is the usage of Bitcoin. Now, if you purchase shares in the BlackRock ETF, you will have shares in a fund that owns Bitcoin. We said that you will not have taken delivery and you will not have the ability to take delivery. Now, if you do not have the ability to take delivery, you cannot use Bitcoin. It means that when somebody says, hey, can you send me Bitcoin? And they give you a Bitcoin address, much like if someone said, hey, send me an email, and they gave you their email address. You have your own email address, and you have your own email account, so you can send that person an email just with them giving you their address. In Bitcoin, there is a similar send and receive way of Bitcoin working. So if someone says, hey, I have a Bitcoin address, you can send me Bitcoin, you will not be able to use Bitcoin. You will not be able to send Bitcoin to that person's address. Why? You don't have Bitcoin. You have shares in a Bitcoin fund. That is another way of explaining why delivery matters. Now, mind you, to some people watching, they might never have the ability desire to take delivery or ever use Bitcoin. We can understand that, but today's video is explaining what the ETF does not allow you to do. Now, with River compared to a Bitcoin ETF, once you purchase Bitcoin on River's platform, again, you do not have the Bitcoin. River still has the Bitcoin. River has a solution that allows them to keep 100% of the Bitcoin in their own reserves. They are not using a third-party custodian. We love that about River, right? Once you purchase your Bitcoin on River, River has it 100% reserved. But you yourself do not have the Bitcoin. You have not taken delivery of the Bitcoin. And therefore, you cannot use Bitcoin. But once you take delivery, then you have Bitcoin in your own wallet. And then when somebody says, hey, here's a Bitcoin address, you can purchase something from me using Bitcoin, you can send Bitcoin to that person using their Bitcoin address. And that's really the difference between River and these ETF vehicles. What you are getting with River is the ability to take delivery of your Bitcoin. You're getting that insurance basically with a very short time lag between when you wire your dollars and when you can actually take delivery of your Bitcoin. And this is completely different than what would happen with an ETF where you can't, you cannot take delivery, therefore you can never use Bitcoin via that ETF structure. Now the third and final difference that I want to explain between a Bitcoin ETF and purchasing Bitcoin on a platform like River is the idea around decentralized currency. Now, when you purchase shares in a Bitcoin ETF, you are using the traditional financial system and you are using a centralized party to engage in investments. We understand that there are people out there that might prefer this way of centralized and fully custodial, non-deliverable Bitcoin. We understand that. And we also understand that 
most major institutions can only participate in Bitcoin via this legal structure of an ETF. And that is also why we believe that Bitcoin ETFs are going to unlock demand that previously wasn't there. It is our estimation that there are trillions of dollars of assets that will become available to the Bitcoin market. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're going to get a trillion dollars worth of buy orders for Bitcoin. We are not saying that at all. However, what we're saying is that the access of those trillions to Bitcoin for the first time in a legal way has begun and is beginning when these ETFs get approved. There are pros to the Bitcoin ETF to the greater Bitcoin market and to many institutions around the world that might not want to take custody of Bitcoin because of their own governance. So what we have here is an ETF complex that is about to begin in the United States SEC regulated environment that does unlock demand and should move Bitcoin along to a more institutionalized ownership base. But it doesn't mean that the individual is getting more access to using a decentralized currency. That is not what's happening with an ETF. So if you want to participate in the new decentralized currency environment, which is going away from government issuers and bank-issued currencies. Remember that the dollar, while it is associated with the United States government, the dollar and dollar creation is largely done by banks around the world. Credit is issued and dollars are created by banks. The Federal Reserve creates dollars as well, but it doesn't create them for you and I. It creates them for the banking system. And so what we have with Bitcoin is a currency that goes away from bank and government issued centralized currencies. You cannot participate in the decentralized Bitcoin currency with shares in a Bitcoin ETF. You are in part contributing to the centralization of the system. And if you are purchasing Bitcoin with a platform like River, what you're doing is you're giving yourself the ability to participate in decentralized currency. Now, another thing that we really like about River is that when you purchase your Bitcoin on River, River is not hoping that you keep it there with them. They're encouraging you to withdraw and find your own custody solutions. They have great educational resources as well in which they explain the concepts around self-custody. And so we appreciate the ethos that comes through when an exchange actually encourages you to withdraw your Bitcoin. To summarize the main three differences that we're discussing between Bitcoin ETFs and purchasing Bitcoin via a platform such as River, number one, delivery. With an ETF, you cannot take delivery of Bitcoin. With River, you can. With an ETF, number two, you cannot use Bitcoin because you cannot take delivery. With River, you can withdraw your Bitcoin and start using Bitcoin on the internet and with other people and businesses that are using Bitcoin right away. And finally, number three, when you purchase shares in a Bitcoin ETF, what you are doing is you are purchasing part of a Bitcoin fund. You are not participating in a decentralized currency. When you purchase Bitcoin via a platform like River, you can take the Bitcoin off the platform and start using this new decentralized currency network that does not depend on governments or banks or central banks. And we think that is very special. Bitcoin is the only decentralized currency to reach this type of adoption that has ever existed. We believe that Bitcoin is going to be around for decades to come because it has achieved the status 
of the world's decentralized currency and the currency of the internet. Thanks for sticking with us today at the Bitcoin layer. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure to subscribe to our free research letter at thebitcoinlayer.com slash subscribe. We'll catch you next time.